Hey there, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of The Photo Finish. This is not a production of Scott Radio. It's a production here in my dorm room at 5.20 on Friday morning, the morning before the truck race at Homestead tonight. I didn't get an opportunity to get into the studio Tuesday evening to record the podcast, which is my normal time. I was busy with other stuff, getting caught up on real-life work and my other podcasts, so... I'm going to roll through some silly season news as quickly as possible because a lot of stuff is broken. Talk about Phoenix briefly. If you were on Twitter during the cup race, you probably know that even if you didn't watch it, it was a really, really uh, uninteresting subpar race. So I'm not going to have a lot to say about that aside from what happened and who is in the Final Four at Homestead. And then, of course, I'll get my championship predictions. So let's roll right into it. Matt Tift and Front Row Motorsports have mutually agreed to part ways to give Tift an opportunity to focus on his health. Of course, Matt Tift had a seizure a few weeks ago that has kept him out of the car, and John Hunter Nemechek has been his replacement for these last couple of races, and he will most likely be the one who will certainly get the most consideration for the seat next season. Front Row Motorsports plans for 2020 are still up in the air, of course, but it's looking like John Hunter Nemechek may be a candidate for that ride. Tyler Ankrum, the K&N Pro Series East champion from 2018, will be moving to GMS Racing in the Truck Series in 2020. Of course, Ankrum kind of had a breakout year midway through the Truck Series season this year, getting a win and making the playoffs. He's still very young. He was actually too young to run the first three races of the year with DGR Crosley. And had a strong playoff run, will now be moving over to GMS, who are obviously an established Truck Series team, looking for big things coming from that duo next season. Daniel Hemrick has found a new home. He's back in the Xfinity Series with Junior Motorsports in the 8 car, and he will split the ride with Dale Earnhardt Jr., who will run his usual one-off race, that will be at Homestead, and Jeb Burton, who will run that car in 11 races. Daniel Hemrick gets the remainder of them. Rick Ware Racing has committed to three full-time teams in the Cup Series, and J.J. Yaley will drive one of them. And this is a big deal for what is quite possibly the smallest full-time team on the Cup Series circuit to be able to commit to running three full-time cars. I'm not expecting Ware to have a massive improvement in performance or anything, but it is good to see them be able to put their resources to good use and keep the car counts up a little bit. Raphael Lassard and ARCA champion Christian Eckes have been named as Todd Gilliland and Harrison Burton's replacements at Kyle Busch Motorsports, respectively. Raphael Lassard will be in the 4, Christian Eckes will be in the 18. I think they're both very good choices, and I expect good things coming from them and KBM next year. And the biggest news that broke yesterday, Cole Custer will replace Daniel Suarez in the number 41 at Stuart Haas Racing in the Cup Series, and, you know, a lot of fans have their opinions on Daniel Suarez. They think he's kind of underwhelmed. He hasn't been as strong as his teammates, both when he was at Gibbs and he was at Stuart Haas, but I still think, personally, it's way too early to give up on the guy um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, Suarez, you have to remember, was rushed to Cup. You know, yes, he won an Xfinity Championship, and I guess... The general thinking is probably, well, if you win Xfinity, you're, you know, what more do you have to prove? You know, you're ready to move up to Cup, right? But I think we've seen, you know, Tyler Reddick didn't move up to Cup last year. William Byron, you know, still hasn't won a Cup Series race. He's looked strong here and there. But Chase Elliott got to Cup, didn't win for a few seasons, didn't move up right away after his Xfinity championship. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. took four years, five years to win. So... I don't know that the fact that Daniel Suarez hasn't won a race yet is something that we can really hold against him. You know, winning a cup race is difficult. The competition is really, really strong, much stronger than it is in the Xfinity Series. So, you know, it, the cars are different to drive. It takes getting used to it. It's, it's, a, it's a whole different feel. And, you know, I think we also have to consider Joey Logano was a Gibbs development driver. And, again, I think was moved up to the Cup Series far too quickly. I think Logano absolutely needed more time to develop in what was then the Nationwide Series before he moved up. He got the rain-shortened win at Martins, or not at Martinsville, at New Hampshire. 
then only won one race with Gibbs before they let him go. And then took a couple of seasons, but found his groove with Penske and is now a Cup Series champion. Um, Martin Truex Jr., similarly, he, he only won three races his first 11 years in the Cup Series, and look where he is now. He could easily win another championship this year. He came in second in the standings last year and is a champion in NASCAR now as well. So our last two champions, you know, if you had told a NASCAR fan in 2009-2010 that Truex and Magana would be perennial championship contenders, they probably would have been at the very least surprised. You know, I'm not saying Daniel Suarez is going to win a cup championship, but I am saying it's far too early in his career, I think, to throw him to the curb. Maybe send him back to Xfinity to re-hone his skills, but it would really upset me if he didn't have a ride anywhere in NASCAR next season or if he had to go all the way back to... uh something like a Mexico series to find something to run. Daniel, I think, has earned the opportunity to be here in America in a national touring series, and I wish him nothing but the best and hope he can find something to keep busy in NASCAR. So NASCAR had four different series at Phoenix this weekend. I'll start briefly with K&N West. It was really the end of an era, of course. That series sort of merges with ARCA next season. It'll be under the ARCA banner. So this was the last race for K&N as the title sponsor and that series under the NASCAR banner. And I have to give my congratulations to Derek Krause. I don't think anybody, like I said on this show a couple of weeks ago, is more deserving of that championship. And I have to say also congratulations to Ty Gibbs on winning the race. Technically, it was, I guess, 11 racing entry, even though obviously the cars were heavily affiliated with and prepared by Joe Gibbs Racing, but a good showing for Ty Gibbs and what's his K&N West debut. I know he's made some K&N East starts this year, but Ty Gibbs' career looks to be off, off to a strong start, as is Derek Krause's. So we'll see what Derek Krause does. He's going to run the Truck Series race at Homestead, actually, this week. That was a race that was added at the last minute. He was only planning to do the original four with Bill McAnally Racing, so who knows if he's going to move up with another Toyota-affiliated team or if BMR could try to run a full truck schedule again. I don't know if they necessarily have the resources to do that at this moment, but I'm sure good things are lying ahead for Derek Krause. Stuart Friesen won the Truck Series race and joins Brett Moffitt, Ross Chastain, and Matt Crafton in the championship for tonight at Homestead Miami Speedway. And I'll tell you what, it's it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top in that group? Because I feel like on paper, Moffat and Chastain have to be considered the two favorites. But when you look at the Phoenix race this weekend, or this past weekend, Stuart Friesen looks incredibly strong. You know, he had a penalty at the very beginning of the race. He started on the front row. They said he jumped the start. You can have your opinion one way or another whether he actually did or not, but he was sent to the back of the pack regardless, had to drive his way back up through, and ended up winning the race. So, Friesen, I think, is absolutely strong enough to take home a championship when we think about Homestead, and obviously Brett Moffat and Ross Chastain are going to be strong as well, as is Matt Crafton. You know, Matt Crafton hasn't won a race this year, but I think he and Thor Sport have been a combination that, you know, should be considered liable to win on any given weekend. So, I think it's totally up in the air. I don't know who is going to come out among these four, and... We'll see. My money is personally on Moffat. Personally, I'm rooting for Chastain for obvious reasons. You know why. Um, but honestly, I like all four of the guys in this group. I think I'll be content as a fan with any one of them winning the championship as somebody who wants to see the best driver over the course of a season win a championship. I still think Moffat is the most deserving of the four. But you've heard me rant about the playoffs enough on this show, so we won't get into that now. Justin Allgaier won the Xfinity Series race, and he'll join Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, and Cole Custer in the championship four in the Xfinity Series. So again, another kind of big three and me situation like we saw in Cup last year. Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, and Cole Custer have kind of taken the majority of the wins, the majority of the spotlight in the Xfinity Series this year. Justin Allgaier hadn't won a race all season until... This weekend, and now he has an opportunity to do what Joey Logano did last year 
and that's steal the spotlight on the night that matters most by going out and winning Homestead. If you want my pick for the Xfinity Series, I still think you have to go with Christopher Bell. Tyler Reddick was joking. Of course, Tyler Reddick ran the high line very well last year, and that's what allowed him to win the championship in 2018. He joked that he was going to run the bottom this year. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what he ends up deciding to do, what strategy all four of these guys use, but I think the smart money has to be on Christopher Bell, and quite frankly, that's who I'm rooting for. Um, I think, again, Bell has had a tremendous season. I think he's absolutely ready to move up to the Cup Series, and I think he would be a worthy champion this year in Xfinity to go with his truck championship and maybe one day win a cup championship in the future is down the road as well. So we'll see what happens, but my money's on Bell. And the Cup Series race was honestly maybe the worst race of the year. I don't want to count the Clash in that. I know the Clash was a disaster, um, but in terms of a points-paying race, there was very, very little going for this race. Um, impossible to pass the leader, and the the package has absolutely ruined. I'm going to echo Matt Weaver. He wrote an excellent piece for Auto Week uh, earlier and said, look, this package has absolutely ruined short track racing and road course racing. You know, those used to be the races that everybody looked forward to. You know, we've got too many of these boring mile and a half. It's not as entertaining to watch as it is the beating and banging on the short tracks and the technicalities of a road course and the different skill set used over there. We want more short tracks and road courses. Well, short tracks and road courses have really suffered this season through this package. And I can't believe I, Jeff Gluck puts the Twitter poll out every week. You know, was it a good race? I 20% of the fans say yes, which on the one hand, I think speaks volumes. On the other hand, if you're, among those, that one in five group that still thought it was a good race, I would love to know what you enjoyed about it. Um, are you just a Denny Hamlin fan and you're saying it was a good race because you like the fact that he won? I, I really don't know. But yeah, I, everybody has their own opinion, I guess. I don't know how you could have thought that was a good race. Maybe if you were in the stands and the atmosphere from attending the race in person, maybe some of those fans voted yes because that's always a better experience than watching it on television. Um... I'm going to admit straight up, though, I didn't watch a single lap on Sunday. I watched the truck race. I watched part of the Xfinity race. I didn't watch the cup race. I, A, wasn't really in the mood, and B, I guess part of the reason I wasn't in the mood was because I figured it was almost certainly going to just be more of the same. You know, it, impossible to pass the leader, clean air is king, um, the giant spoilers take away the ability to pass. I mean, just the, the, the package does not work, and... I know we've got the new car coming out in 2021, but I something's got to change on the short tracks and uh, road courses next year because we can't keep doing this in the Cup Series. Um, it's just it's not an entertaining enough product. The racing is not – it's just not there. So, But Denny Hamlin, uh, regardless, he probably doesn't care too much because he won the Phoenix race and is going to – Homestead Miami in the championship four, along with last year's big three, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Truex Jr. So, who's my pick for the Cup Series? I I think there's just something about this year that feels like it's Denny Hamlin's year. You know, every time, you know, he was almost in a must-win situation at Phoenix. It was going to be very hard for him to point his way in. He went out and did what he had to do and won. You know, sometimes it just feels like when it's your year, it's your year. I get that feeling with Denny Hamlin this year. He got off to, you couldn't have asked for a better start, winning the Daytona 500, has won multiple races this season, I think is having a career year anyway, and I think is more mature than the last time he was really this close to a championship in 2010. I think this is Denny Hamlin's championship to lose. I know we have this winner-take-all format, so it could be any of these four, really. They've all had very good seasons, and I think all deserve to be in and among the final four championship contenders um but again I think Denny Hamlin when you look at the whole season Kyle Busch's performance hasn't really been there since the summer compared to Hamlin and compared to others it's been a little while since he actually even so much as won a race I just I think you have to go with Denny Hamlin so that's going to be my pick for the cup series and that's going to be it for this week's uh shortened 
brief edition of the photo finish. I'm don't think I'm gonna get this up uh, before the truck race on Friday evening. I'm gonna try, um, but that's a brief rundown of your silly season news and what happened at Phoenix. What I think is gonna happen at Homestead, and of course we'll be back on Tuesday night to recap everything, recap the season, and analyze what went down back in the studio. So we'll see you guys then. Have a good night, everybody.